So welcome today to the talk about combining OPC UA and Automation ML, two upcoming standard series which are in the context of Industry 4.0 and the Industrial Internet very important. The motivation are continuous changes in production systems which cause the reconfiguration of hardware and software components. The objects which have to be changed or which are changed within a manufacturing enterprise are the products but also technological or logistical processes, parts of the manufacturing facilities and last but not least the software systems and the company's organization. The effect is that uh, we need interoperability and seamless semantic integration um, and what we have today um, is um, not this, um, yeah, this goal but um, like a bubble on, on the shop floor. We have different components like washing machines, like robots but also manufacturing, tool, uh, manufacturing tools and these are connected to various superordinated IT systems like MES, visualization or SCADA. Um, this connection is done via multiple um, yeah, standards like field buses, um, other communication standards and a lot of different different data exchange formats. What we want to achieve is um, today we have um, the situation that we have signal from the process, from the production process, which are given to the applications. For example, a visualization, for example, an evaluation tool or any new application. Today, there are a lot of systems which um, already yeah, combine those signals to resource objects. This means that uh, signals which are belonging together are combined in one object. The effect is that we have less configuration effort in each of these applications and that we have a lot of information already bundled at this information level. But uh, the future is um, Industry 4.0 uh, or Industry 4.0 uh, where we have semantic models. This means that we do not only transport the communication signals but also the semantics with them. And this means that each of these applications can be connected and it's not uh, important which new application comes, but all the information about the semantic belonging to the objects, to the signals, is already included in this um, yeah, semantic model here. This means that know-how and uh, the semantic, the meaning of the objects is transported together with the communication. For this future vision, uh, we need different things. Um, on the one hand, we need a component description, which can be um, where, where Automation ML can be used. But also, not only the description, but um, like requirements um, or, and other things result in the component selection process. This means that you can, based on this description, you can um, select which component is best fitting for your production process, for example. Therefore, Automation ML can also be used, but Automation ML is a data exchange format and is not um, designed and not, um, yeah, was not built for the communication part. It's only a descriptive thing and we need the possibility not only to describe what, um, yeah, what to communicate, but also how. And therefore, we have the component access, which can be done by OPC UA on each level of the automation uh, pyramid or on each automation layer. And uh, we must have the possibility to also um, have a controlling access to the components. And therefore, our OPC UA can also fit. This means that Automation ML uh, can be used to describe production system components and their skills, so a function-oriented description. Um, we can have a function-oriented description of production tasks, and we can have methods for automatic matching or comparison for the selection process. Additionally, we can describe um, the access of the communication components um, of the devices, for example. This means that we can describe the access path to the function of the component with Automation ML. 
On the other hand, we have the data exchange of the components and uh, must say how we do exchange information between components of a production system so over different, for example, automation layers, but also over different, for example, um, for example um, locations. Therefore, we have standardized interfaces for the access to the components by OPC UA. We have the possibility to combine uh, components from different vendors within one production system. And we have the possibility to uh, have self-adapting um, information and control structures based on the information model included in OPC UA. This results in the possibility to have also self-parameterization of the structures of the whole production system. The effect is that on the one hand, if you combine where, which things to describe, what to describe, and on the other hand, how to, uh, to exchange this information, um, the result is that you should combine these those two standard series. In 2013, the cooperation between the Automation ML organization and the OPC Foundation started at the SPS IPC drives. Um, since then, I'm the head of this working group and we have a lot of current group members which are actively involved in the design specification phase for combining both standards. Current results are, on the one hand, the companion specification, which was released in February 2016, and on the other hand, the upcoming Dean Spec uh, 165992, uh, combining AML and OPC UA, um, which is coming out in December 2016. Um, these two results um, handle on the one hand uh, the companion specification, a general explanation of this combination, mapping rules of how to transform automation ML models into OPC UA information models. Um, there are organizing nodes which are defined in the address space of um, yeah, aggregating server which combine both standards and we have the conversion of the automation ML standard libraries. On the other hand, the Dean Spec 16592 extends the already existing mapping rules and defines more detailed mapping rules. Um, it integrates OPC UA configuration data in automation ML models by the concept of data variables. And it relates automation ML and OPC UA and this combination to other standards and specifications and explains how to do this. Additionally, um, there are some use cases defined for industrial applications where the combination of both standard series makes sense in the future. We also have one reference implementation, which was done by the Fraunhofer IOSB, the plug and work cube, which integrates, on the one hand, the OPC UA configuration information in the automation ML model of the production systems, and on the other hand, the transformation of automation ML to OPC UA information models. By this, uh, these two things, we have the possibility to integrate different machines from different vendors. We have the common language level with automation ML and we have a common communication level by OPC UA. And um, where the plug and work cube currently is used for the connection of machines, devices, components to, for example, superordinated MES visualization or SCADA components. The goals and benefits can be split up into two directions. On the one hand, the automation ML integration in OPC UA, where we have the goal to communicate and operationalize automation ML by means of OPC UA. The OPC UA server includes the functional view on production, so the information model. The result is that automation ML models can be exchanged via OPC UA and it can simplify the creation of OPC UA information models based on the information, the existing um, automation ML engineering data. The application is um, yeah, for every re-engineering and maintenance use case where automation ML models evolve over the time. For example, if we have a um, um, machine vendor and the machine operator, 
the machine vendor can use uh, this combination for a lossless storage and retrieval of system engineering information for system maintenance, repair and overhaul. This means that we have, for example, more exact failure forecasts based on operational data. We have the possibility to uh, include mechanisms for predictive maintenance. And we have the possibility to easy and safely maintain uh, and connect to the components at the customer side. So the result could be that the machine vendor provides longer guarantee or warranty of the components and we have a log or history for these running components um, where a persistent storage can be, um, can be integrated. On the other hand, we have the OPC UA integration in Automation ML. This means that we want to exchange the OPC UA system configuration by Automation ML models or with Automation ML models. Uh, the result is that we have the parameters to set up OPC UA communication between tools and these parameters can be exchanged using Automation ML. The benefit is to simplify this configuration step of OPC UA client connection to an OPC UA server and reduce the manual configuration effort for this task. The application can be used for configuration of communication networks based on the description of the network configuration and structure, including, for example, the communicating components, the sensors, actuators with respect to communication system parameters, network structure, wiring, and, for example, quality of service. To this end, um, one example for use case, um, if we have visualization systems like, for example, um, yeah, SCADA systems or other things um, where we have many industry components in this uh, field, normally you have a, a big effort to set up those, um, yeah, those pictures with uh, the, the underlying communication to the reproduction process based on the description of OPC UA system configuration information within an automation ML model and uh, the rest of the automation ML model. So for example, plant topology, the 3D representation, um, for example, process, um, yeah, process um, data or material flow information. We can um, automatically um, generate those visualization, those pictures, without any manual efforts. So this means that we have a faster startup for these systems, we have the integrated documentation for the components, and we can use existing data for the engineering of MES or visualization systems. Last but not least, Automation ML and OPC UA are discussed in the context of Industry 4.0. And if we discuss about Industry 4.0, we are already um, yeah, have some concepts which were defined, for example, the Industry 4.0 component. This component includes, on the one hand, the manifest, which describes um, the possible functionality of the component and the component manager, which gives access to the component. OPC UA, for example, can be used to, uh, um, yeah, to realize a component manager and Automation ML can be used to describe the manifest of the industry for the zero components. By this end, um, with the combination of both, uh, you can access the com industry for the zero component and use the information about this component, which includes the description, their functionality, their properties, and everything which belongs to the component itself. On the other hand, if we look at the reference architecture model industry 4.0, the RAMI 4.0, we have um, different layers of, uh, for the integration of components, and OPC UA can be nested within the communication layer and Automation ML within the information layer. So this means uh, also there, both standards are really important. The current work of the um, joint working group um, turns around um, the integration of OPC UA configuration data and automation ML. There uh, will be some publication about this um, by the automation ML uh, best practice recommendation for the data variable concept. And on the other hand, um, automation ML and also OPC UA have a lot of um, yeah, common points with other standards. So this means that, for example, automation ML describes devices 
and there are some other companion specifications already existing and which are used, um, which can be combined with the uh, um, automation ML and OPC UA combination. So this means that, for example, there shall be suggestions, ideas um, for combining OPC UA for automation ML with OPC UA for devices or with the um, OPC UA for the IEC 62264, so then ISA 95, or for example, with the concept um, of OPC UA for PLC Open. Um, currently, we are selecting relevant companion specifications and um, working on some yeah, first uh, ideas, suggestions about how to combine those two, how to use both in common, because harmonization is a really strong point for the future where uh, you cannot um, yeah, be sure that you can only use one standard, but you have to combine in the context of the industry internet and industry 4.0 a lot of existing standards. By this I'm already at the end. If you have any suggestions or ideas to this companion specification, please do not hesitate to contact us. And for example, if you want to participate, we welcome you to join the um, joint working group and uh, work with us together on this really important and exciting topic. Thank you. <laughs>